Welcome to the Magic Marine Morning Show. It's day two here in Helsinki. I'm your host, Bo Outeridge, and I'm joined by Matthew McGovern and Eric Heil. Welcome, boys. Morning. Thank you very much for having us. Well, no worries. Um, looking ahead today, each of you want to tell us uh, how you guys, uh, after yesterday, how you guys are feeling about racing today? Well, uh, yeah, we need to get some racing done because we didn't have a great day yesterday. So hopefully we'll get a few more races in and uh, that'll give us more of a chance to climb back up the leaderboard. But uh, if you could see what I'm seeing right now, it looks pretty glass calm and beautiful sunshine. So not perfect sailing conditions yet. Okay, and Eric? Yeah, I think too, we had a great day yesterday with, uh, I think, 11 knots. Um, stable conditions and uh, I think only the race course C had some problems with stones but uh, <laughs> overall I think we had a good good day yesterday and uh, today it's quite light so we, we wait for wind. Okay and Matt did you did you see anyone hit the crash into the ground? No lucky enough uh, Eric and I we were both on the two two courses without any rocks um, so yeah we avoided that I just don't want to be in that far away course at all this week hopefully. Yeah okay. <laughs> All right, well, um, in light conditions, how hard does the crew and skipper work compared to the windier conditions? Do, um, Eric, maybe you can answer that. How, do you work a lot harder in lighter or windier? What do you think? I think it's quite the same, but um, it's a bit harder for the helmsman in comparison to the, to the crew. The crew has, has it a bit light, uh, easier, I think, in lighter winds, yeah, for sure. And uh, for the helmsman, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we have uh, we've seen we've seen how hard online um, your crew is uh, um, Tommy. He's put together a nice nice video comparing how hard the crews work. And maybe Matt, after this, you can back us all up. So let's uh, let's have a look at this video that Eric's crew has put together. <coughs> <laughs> that looks uh, that looks pretty accurate to me. In fact, I'm surprised the helm's even doing that much heart rate, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just one of those things, especially when the wind's up. It's all the crew is just yeah, yeah. crazy for it. All right. Well, um, maybe Eric, you might have a rebuttal to the whole uh, the video. Did they, did uh, Tommy use his editing skills to to change things up, or is that pretty pretty true? First of all, I think. Uh, for me, it's a bit embarrassing. So <laughs> I thought about calling myself a, a sportman again after seeing this video. <laughs> and uh, but I, I'm 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 still over 100 uh, heart rate. So yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like sport. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a fast park. walk. Maybe snooker. <laughs> <laughs> so give him darts. <laughs> so for sure, the the crew has the harder job on the boat. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think you need to do all. Uh, yeah, all things to make it easier for the crew to handle easier on the, for the crew, and yeah, that's uh, that's the main thing for the for the helmsman. Yeah, is there a big as a helmsman? I know uh, talking to my brother Nathan a lot. He he says that most of the time it's him gauging how much energy the crew has left to figure out how he makes his decisions. Like, is that do you use that kind of strategy when you're, you're keeping an eye on Tommy? Yeah, just just in special conditions. Maybe yesterday Tommy is a bit sick again, but uh, uh, when we have three laps and uh, a good breeze, then it's quite hard for a, uh, for a crew to uh, uh, to stay good in their drops. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then I, I try to keep the level low and uh, um, try to make uh, easy rounding and uh, yeah. you know 
everything just, like this. Yeah. Maybe that's where we're going wrong. Don't think Ryan ever considers that. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him. see me work hard. <laughs> Mm. All right, well, uh, let's move on to a bit more of a serious kind of off the water topic. And, and what do you guys get up to when you're not sailing and not physically training for these, these events? Do you, do you have a lot of different jobs to do? Like, you, you maybe, Matt, you can fill us in on what you guys do? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, most people we talk to think you're a professional sailor, you sit around in the sun all day and go in the water for a few hours, which Maybe at a regatta is true, it's probably the easiest week we have is at a, at a sailing regatta, maybe you, I don't know if you find it or not, but we have quite a lot of spare time in the afternoons or the evenings, because um, you're always resting for the next day, it's more though when you come to doing your training and your day in day out job, that's where all the behind the scenes things happen, you know, the paperwork, the working with sponsors, gym classes, you know, just there's so many other aspects to it. All the logistics and finances take up so much time. Does Ryan do any of that? I don't think Ryan knows that that stuff happens, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's a skipper. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, no, I mean, that's not fair. Ryan, uh, Ryan's great at uh, doing all our media stuff and, you know, sponsors love to chat to him. He, he does well. like a selfie, I've noticed. Yeah, 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 he likes to put a few selfies up on Facebook. So. All right. And Eric, what about you guys? Uh, do you have a, a way of splitting up your jobs? Yeah, for sure. I think you need to split up your jobs, but because there's not enough time to, to do it alone. Um, it's quite the same like, like uh, Matt, Matt is doing and split, split the jobs. Um, Thomas is doing logistics and, and financials and I'm doing uh, communication to sponsors and also most of the time communica communication in the social media stuff. So uh, yeah, yeah that's, the way, that's the way we do it. Cool. All right. Well, we have, um, we've seen, let's, let's discuss the effects of the effects. <laughs> Since the introduction of the girls class, um, we've, we've noticed there's been a trending um, a trend sweeping the, the boat park at the moment and maybe you guys could, could shed a little light on what happens around here. Um, well, uh, I guess there's a couple of things have changed now, I haven't, maybe like, a hundred girls at tops walking around the dinghy park has certainly changed some of the guys' attitudes about the place. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot more naked bodies on show. Uh, probably one of those mating calls trying to attract the females, I'd say. <laughs> I think we've also got some manners seem to have evolved in the 49er class as well. Some manners, yeah. Yeah, yeah, guys love to help girls with the trolleys and, uh, you know, <laughs> stuff like where you go to the bathroom, it doesn't happen right at the boat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who does that. That's a pretty. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, now you've shamed yourself. Let's <laughs> let's cross to some evidence we've got um, of of this activity. Yep, that looks like a typical picture of my helm there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's not a rare sight, is yeah, it? Yeah, the only thing we were saying was it's unusual to see him with his top on. Oh, yeah? Uh, you know, as a single man in the fleet, uh, he normally likes to walk around with his top off and get the, the abs out, you know, <laughs> working the time. Well, we're, well, we are just talking before about Tommy and, uh, and Eric. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little how you guys have prepared to become shirtless. <laughs> and, and, yeah, tell us a little about what you've done there. Uh, it's it's a lot of training at the beach, <laughs> for sure. But me, I'm not too too often shortless. Uh, shortless but uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, for sure Tommy and for sure I think a lot of crews, yeah, because yeah. because the physical uh, the physical uh, part of uh, yeah, of sailing is more. We saw it at the, yeah, at yeah. the crew. Yeah, of course. And, uh, yeah. Okay, but how do you keep your sponsors happy when the sponsors are obviously plastered on your shirt? Yeah, for sure. We, <laughs> we calculated this uh, and um, organized some tattoos so we can easily uh, use the tattoos also shirtless. And um, Sounds like a very prepared crew right now. Yeah, this is German precision right there. We, we, we call it professional. <laughs> <laughs> Standard professionals. Tattoos to keep the sponsors happy. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, um, how are you guys? Like, today is not a lot of wins. So let's, um, what do you guys have to do to prepare to get ready to go on the water? Is there any strategy or uh, on, this, on these light days, do you have anything specific you have to do? Like eat a banana or something? I don't know. <laughs> 
Uh, for me, it's um, I try to listen to music uh, in, with different styles. So I, I listen to to classic and calm music and in, uh, in light conditions, and to to uh, heavy metal music and in stronger conditions. So that's my preparation. Okay, and that. Yeah, I think um, you're probably quite like most of the skippers would be doing that, you know, and today especially I'd imagine they're trying to get themselves in the mind zone because it's the skippers that are going to be working today, maybe not hard physically for anyone, but certainly in the brain it's all on the skippers, so I'll, I as a crew, like, I'll just be asleep in my bed in the back of the van until race time. <laughs> I just, you know, crews just love to go to bed, get some sleep in, you know, yeah, be yeah. rested. So yeah, I've got a bed in the back of the van and it's a nice sunny day. I'll open the door and just lie in the bed and sleep for an hour waiting for the racing. All right, well, what do you, um, well, Matt, specifically, what do you, what do you think of your coach, Ian Barker? Oh, need to get rid of him, eh? No, um, <laughs> Ian's great. I mean, obviously he's got himself an Olympic medal from the 49ers, so everything he says has a bit more power to it and we like to take it all on board um i do believe you've got him and a couple of other coaches on tomorrow morning is yeah that right? yeah, yeah we've got Emmett and we've got ivan and uh and we've also got marcus spillane probably wouldn't bother tuning in for that unless you like to listen to people talk about what they eat it'll be a 15 minute segment on coaches you know <laughs> oh yeah i had three sandwiches today and a packet of crisps and i'm really tired from being in the water you know <laughs> that's pretty much what we get from our coach <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay well that's all we've got time for today um thanks for tuning in we'll um we'll be back tomorrow like we were just talking we'll have the coaches on and we'll be talking all different things mostly about rio and the new isaf sailing world cup format so thanks again for tuning in i'm bo outridge and we'll see you tomorrow <laughs>